Hi friends, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com and today I'm going to be sharing a standing pom-pom gnome in boots. If you'd like to make him boop, just stick around. As always, please give this video a like so I know you're here crafting with me. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. So this guy, I have to admit, one of my favorites. Now I made mine without arms, but you could absolutely put some arms in here. I have these fun little boots we made yesterday, the easiest pants pattern ever, and an easy way to make a hat. If you're new or didn't see it, I'll put the link to the party favor booties down below. I'm going to use the K-Cup, um, here's the boots we made yesterday, and a nose, this is a wood bead that's painted. I'm going to use a Dollar Tree dowel and one of their Jenga blocks, but you don't have to do this. As I'm building this, you can watch and I'll give you some alternatives. For this one, I am going to protect my work surface because I'm going to be drilling. Don't want to drill through our craft table. And I'm just going to use a 12 inch dowel and I'm just going to outline it, uh, like just make a little trace of the outside of it. And then I'm going to do it on the other side. I'm leaving about an eighth of an inch on either side just so I can make sure it's solid. I'm going to poke a little hole with scissors right into the middle of it so I can line up my drill bit and then go very slowly in about halfway. Now, if you don't have a drill or you're afraid of them, I get it, I was for a long time, no judgment here. You can use air dry clay that we use to make the booties and do this exact same thing. Just note, you'll have to use a little bit more hot glue because air dry clay tends to shrink a little bit. All right, so we're going to repeat this entire thing for the other side. Again, you're just making a little divot. No matter what way you do this, you don't even have to have a stabilizer. I thought it was a little bit easier to make it with the stabilizer than it was without. I just cut this dowel right in half using my miter shears on, you know, 90 degree angle. Um, but here's the thing, it will make it a little easier to make the pants and it will make it a little more stable when you create the actual body with the pom pom. All right, so to add some stability while I put all this thing together, I'm just going to add a little hot glue into these little holes and stick in the dowel. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, so we're going to add a little bit more hot glue. And again, this is only a temporary hold because once we assemble this guy, he's not coming apart. All right, so I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and then set that to dry. What will happen is now you can see, make sure they're even. If you didn't cut them even, just snip off a little bit of the, you know, bottom with scissors or something. This is a pom-pom I got on Amazon as part of a 12-pack. I've made six of these gnomes and shared them thus far. They're super easy to cut open. Just find the little pull string, pop in your X-Acto knife, and they open right up. I'm going to remove the stuffing because... <clears throat> It's kind of grody. Uh, but that right there is the body for our gnome. And look, you're halfway done. We're just going to end up wrapping it like this. All right, so easiest pants. I think I said easiest pants recipe. Oh, man, I meant to say easiest pants pattern. Okay, so we're just going to get an idea of how long we want the pants to hit. Now, I'm going to use pinking shears for mine, and I'm going to mat, uh, add socks. So mine are going to be a little short. All I'm using is a flannel in the weirdest brownish gray I've ever seen. It just called to me, and it screamed this gnome. So had to get a little piece of it. And then all I'm going to do is just make sure I have my wrap here. Just make sure it wraps around with about a half inch overlay so you can make a seam. Look how easy. We're just going to tuck it over and the other side. Just mark where it is, and then you're done. That's super easy. All right, so now um, you can see my bottom isn't even even, isn't even even huh anyway we're going to sew up one side by hot glue hemming this thing all along that outside edge right sides are together but it doesn't really matter this is flannel all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to oh well <clears throat> okay this is me showing you it's not very evenly cut but when you fold it to get the halfway mark, fold it to the inside of the hot glue seam. And the reason you're doing that is so your pant legs are even. Easy peasy, right? I know it looks really wrong. It looks very wonky, but that's because we're hot glue hemming this thing, okay? I promise you, it will look right. One leg looks bigger than the other, but don't fret. Do get your hot glue gun and go ahead and do the inside leg seams. 
just with a nice little detail tip hot glue gun. I'm using the Surebonder detail tip. It's corded. It's only one temperature hot and I love it. If you've been around this channel, you know that uh, Amazon loves me for recommending this. I got a little note from them. That's how many people apparently <laughs> I have sent over to Amazon with this glue gun. All right, so now I'm just going to flip it right side out using scissors to poke out my legs. All right, and you don't have to do the top. The top will be covered inside of the body. If you wanna add little pockets or patches, I'm gonna end up doing uh, the patches in a second, but two little back pockets would be super cute too. Just wanna make sure you know where everything is going to sit. And it's really easy to assemble these. It's just that if you want your pants a little shorter like I did, um, just pull up your little pants a little further before you glue them down. All right, here we go. So I'm just going to glue this right to the wood base, be, or, or you can glue it right to your air dry clay piece, or you can glue it right to the inside of your um, entire little uh, pom-pom. So this is for socks. Now I know it's bright white, which is why I got a brown marker, and I'm just going to, I'm just going to dirty them up a bit, okay? Because I'm crafting with limited resources. This is when we had first started packing up our house for the move from Seattle, Washington to Austin, Texas. So I was kind of limited. All right, so I'm just cutting two little um, rectangles and I'm just gonna hem them together. And this will be the outside, um, so you don't have to flip them. I'm gonna, while they set, get some rocks out because I'm gonna weight my little uh, feeties here, <laughs> my little booties here with the rocks. All right, so I'm just gonna turn down the cuff of the very top of the sock and then I'm just gonna glue that in place in the back just to tack it in. And then what that's gonna do is I'm actually gonna end up scrunching these down into the shoe and it will cover the rocks and look like a little sock that fell down. So I repeated it with the other side and just making sure I have my measurements for everything and then I'm going to squish everything up to the top so that I can tack these two feet in place legs legs in place all right so I'm just going to hold this here so I'm fast forwarding this to let you know I actually held this until the glue was dry and then once it was dry I just started filling the little Dollar Tree booty uh, openings with very small rocks also from the Dollar Tree you can use poly pellets you can use hex nuts you can use anything you want i do recommend that you do not use food products uh, because no matter what you use there is a tendency for molding or sprouting or buggies and rodents so yes yuck all right well, i'm going to repeat this for the second one not going to make you watch all of it but i am going to cover the entire top in glue and then squish down my little sock and that covers everything all nice and pretty Again, you don't have to do this. Your pant legs can go all the way in. I'm going to be sharing some roller skates I made this way. Oh, man, they're so cute. Um, but anyway, you have a lot of ideas. I made some tennis shoes this way. have no idea what I did with them. They're unpainted somewhere in my craft room or in a box. All right, so I had some glue, uh, hot glue strings, so I just hit the entire piece with my hot glue gun. I have a little tiny scrap of brown fleece, and I'm going to use pinking shears to cut out a patch for my knee. And if you wanted to do, like, I think it would be so cute, and I didn't think of it till later, but I think it would be really cute if you made little pat or back pockets for the pants. I don't know why. I think I would stick something in them. I don't know what. Leave me a comment below and, you know, give me some ideas because now I just need to make one with these like huge rectangle pockets in the back. All right, so set that all aside. We're going to move on to the easiest hat ever. I'm using a recycled K-cup that has been cleaned. I'm going to create a little line all the way across so I can cut it. Uh, wow. I'm going to skip through this part because I was ha apparently having a problem cutting. So I have two pieces here. We're going to toss the second one. Even though I ripped this one, it's totally fine. I'm going to get some black felt. This is the premium felt that comes in the 12 by 19 sheets at the craft store. But you can use any fabric you want. I trace the top of the K-cup. I traced the bottom opening of the K-cup, but added about a half inch all the way around. It's not even. It's okay. All I'm going to do is make that a little wonky anyway. I measured the outside of my hat with a uh, measuring tape, and it was about five inches. So all I'm going to do is lay that onto my felt and cut five inches across by the same-ish 
width high or height high. So I end up cutting it down just because um, it's super easy to do it later. All right, so it's just going to be assembled like this. Very, very simple hat, but looks adorable because we don't have to make a cut out of anything. So it's super easy. All right, step one to make the hat, stick on the outside. I'm trying to see if there's an inside or an outside. It's felt, Sarah. Hmm. Just stick this on all the way around. You can see that I have quite a bit of hangover, but don't worry. We do want a little bit of hangover to hide where we're going to join it, um, but just you know, don't, don't fret about this. I'm going to cut it so that it's about an eighth of an inch away from the bottom of my K cup. And that's where I'm going to hide my glue when I attach it to the bottom. So I'm going just at the bottom on the inside. I don't want any of that glue to seep out. So I'm just going to let it dry a little bit and then I'm going to squish it so it looks wrinkly. I'm going to glue on the very, very tippy top after hitting the edges with a Sharpie. Uh, you don't have to do that, but I wanted to make sure I didn't have any white showing through. Here I got a little bit of hot glue on the brim, so I'm just going to heat it, heat it up with a heat gun. Set it aside, and now it's time to assemble. Look, you're, on, you're already almost done. All right, so we're just going to glue this right to the bottom edge of our inside of pom-pom. And then I also glued down the sides as well, so you didn't have these big sticky outy things. Again, this is a sixth one of these that I've made, so I've learned a couple things like go ahead and cut that little string off. Hiding it does not work. Uh, and glue down the sides before you glue down anything else. All right, so now I'm just going to glue down the front. Again, nice big long bead of hot glue right along this edge. Here is where you could add arms. If you're making arms super cute, little arms made out of the same material would be super fun. All right, and now why I'm putting it so high is because I'm actually going to be brushing down this pom-pom in the front and around the back because again I'm going to create a little um, place for the nose just by pulling my fur apart getting to that fabric backing and then placing a good amount of hot glue right there so that I can use my painted one inch wood bead or wood round as a nose so just boop it on there all right, stand him up and then go ahead, add a little hot glue to the very top of the nose, add it to the bottom of the hat so that we can glue it right to the top of that pom-pom and squish it on. Ready? A squish. And then after he dries, you're all done. You see how easy this is? This is one of the most fun gnomes I've ever put together. I giggled, but you let me know what you think in uh, the comment section below. As always, thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe for more crafty fun.